everybody, how you doing? Today is Monday. Not sure about the date. <laughs> anyway, we're starting a week. I think it's 27, 28, maybe 29. Wait, let me check. Yeah, 27. Uh, on the way back home, I mean to the dojo. Need to start teaching in about half hour. It's very tight. And as you can see, it's raining. Hold on, let me turn the camera and we move on. Right, so back on the road. It's raining. I hope my wiper won't irritate you. <laughs> so, as you can see, raining day in Singapore. It looks like winter. It's not really winter. Here it's tropic, so one hour later the sun can come out, but I don't think it's gonna come out today anymore. But that's life. So it's another day. Weather is a bit cloudy. Well when you sit in your car it's not that bad. But if you're out there in the rain and you have no shelter, no food, no clothes to wear, you're in deep shit. But I wanna tell you that you must know. We all know. And every time after the rain, the sun is shining and everything becomes smooth and beautiful and fresh. So rain is like the tears, it flushes everything out, all the dirt, all the hardship, all the sorrow, all the sadness. Everything will be flushed by the rain. And the rain will purify your heart and your soul. And when you cry, just like the rain, it heals you. It helps you to heal. Crying is okay. It helps you to overcome the hardship. You don't have to keep everything inside for so long. Sometimes, let it go. Let the tears go down on your cheek and flush all your sorrow your hardship, your frustration, it's okay. And after you cry, you feel a relief. You know, crying and laughing and shouting is the same. It's just another reaction of our body to a certain situations. A lot of people that are afraid to cry and they feel that crying is bad. <laughs> some people they see somebody crying oh you're a cry baby don't cry it's okay crying is part of the mechanism of the body just so you go and pee <laughs> sometimes you can cry it's okay I'm not saying you have to cry every day <laughs> but if if something shit happens and you feel like you're bursting in tears or you're very sad and it's an emotional reaction even if you watch a movie and it's sad and you sympathize with, with the situation that you've seen in the scene or with the hero that goes through his hardship or whatever, it doesn't matter, right? And you have tears of joy or sadness, it's okay. If somebody dies and you cry, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay, you can do that, right? Nobody say anything then. So don't be afraid to express your feelings. There are many cultures that they are holding your feeling deep inside and don't let it out. It doesn't sound manly enough. It doesn't sound, oh, you're not strong enough. You're a crybaby. Oh, you always talk about your problems. You cannot control it by yourself. You gotta be tough. Yeah, we can be tough, but sometimes it's hard to keep everything inside. And some people that are raised like that, they keep everything inside, they never say anything, they don't share their feelings. I'm not saying you have to cry all day, but you can share your feelings, you can talk about your problems, you can let it out. The less you keep inside, the less poison you have inside. You know, keeping all your troubles and your problems inside so hard, it comes out, you can see the face. <laughs> you look at the face of the people, you know, this guy. <laughs> You have a lot inside. 
Everything holding in. Everything is inside. Like a can of worms inside, just waiting to burst outside. And some people, they conceal. I respect people also who, you know, they, they take it in. And they don't say anything and they go on and move on. But you see, sometimes people, they don't talk. And then they suicide and you don't know what happened. What happened? The guy was okay. Suddenly he jumped out of the building. Because he couldn't take it anymore. And he was, he was ashamed or scared to say out loud, Hey, I'm in trouble. I need help. <laughs> Please help me. I don't want to jump from a building. I don't want to crash my car in the wall. I don't want to shoot my head. I want to leave. But I don't know how. I don't know how I can continue to live like that. Many years ago, I had a teacher. His name is Dan Waxman. He was the first Israeli who went to Japan in 58, 1958 to learn Judo, Ninjitsu, and Zen. I met him many years later. And he told me that he knew Inukuma Sensei. Inukuma was Japan open weight division Olympic champion in 1964 in Tokyo Olympic. Inukuma, I don't remember his full name, Inukuma was a Japan gold medalist hero. It was the, it was the first time Japan brought judo into the Olympic and he was in Tokyo. Can you imagine Japanese pride, Japanese kokoro, Japanese spirit, first time judo in the Olympic and he takes the gold medal for open weight division. That's an amazing achievement. I mean, crazy. This guy is a national hero. And he opened a construction company throughout all Japan. And you know that in Japan, the workers, they commit to the company, and the company will commit to them, and they will work all their life in the company. They will never go to another company, but then they are expecting to have their retirement money. And when, se when September 11 came, his business got bankrupt and he couldn't pay the insurance money he had to pay to all his workers. He couldn't pay compensation to all his workers and the, the insurance company bankrupt as well so they couldn't pay the pension money to all the workers who worked for 30 years. Now he had thousands of workers. He couldn't take it anymore. He lost face and lost his pride and his spirit and he committed suicide. By the old Japanese way, he made a haragiri or seppuku. That means he cut his stomach. Hara means stomach. And kiri is to cut. But when there's a word before the word, the, the letter K in Japanese, it, it turns into a G. So it's haragiri. Hara means stomach and kiri. So he took a sword, the wakizashi, the short sword, and he cut his stomach, and he died. Now that's not a joke. He just died by the sword, and he is a national hero, and he'll become a millionaire, and one day he bankrupt, and in his biggest confrontation in life, when he need to fight hard against it, he decided to commit suicide because he couldn't look in the face of the people that he promised them that for 30 years they worked for him and he needs to give them their compensation money or their pension money and he can't do that and he couldn't face the shame watching all those people work for him for so many years unable to pay them and he committed suicide now I'm asking you what would you do and what do you think should he commit suicide or should he stay alive? Maybe the government can help him. Maybe people will come and help him. Maybe he take a loan. I don't know what. He was a champion. He was a hero, a national hero. Why he have to take his life at the age of around 60? He was a young man, still a young man. He was around his uh, early 60s. Now, now Dan Waxman, the story goes, gave me a letter when I went to Japan one of the times to meet him and I wanted to meet him so I called his office 
and the lady told me that he's on a business trip but when he come back he'll be happy to meet me so unfortunately I couldn't meet him I really wanted to meet him you know you don't have a chance to meet every day an Olympic champion especially such a, a huge success of this kind of this kind of success right and I met many interesting people I met the Prime Minister in Israel I spoke with him I met many other people interesting people you know successful people uh, public figures it's always nice and interesting to meet somebody who done something special you always can learn something I'm just a simple guy you know I, I don't do much maybe I don't know but I like to meet different people I can learn from them it's an experience and in the course I was an inspiration I mean I've done judo since I'm seven years old judo is not my main course but I still have a black belt from the Kodokan from Japan and it was interesting to meet him after all the story I heard from my, my sensei that studied with him and practiced with him and learned from him and yeah and, and I missed this meeting and then a few months later I heard from my teacher that he commit suicide and I heard the story and I felt wow this is very bad I mean this is really really bad this shouldn't happen you know if you're in trouble I don't know if you hear me now but if you're in trouble and I've been in trouble and I've seen death in front of my face a few times a few times in car accidents a few times in the ocean when crazy big wave break on my head 12 meter wave and a few times that I wanted to take my own life because I couldn't take it anymore but at the moment of truth before jumping hitting the wall hanging myself even at the last moment I said no 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 this is not happening nobody nobody in this world worth that I'm gonna die for him I'm sorry I'm not dying from anybody not because somebody done something to me not because I can't take it anymore or not because of anything life is only once unless you believe in reincarnation <laughs> heaven and earth <laughs> heaven and heaven and hell <laughs> hope you go to heaven i believe in this life <laughs> i live now i live here i live in this world i don't know what's going to happen next i know i'm living now i'm not giving my life away so quick and i told you i was very very down below the surface of the of the floor <laughs> with the weeds in the roots <laughs> and I couldn't see the light and I wanted to take my life away as well but at the last moment I said to myself you cannot do that you strike you fight you been to many many confrontation in your life you struggle a lot and you made it all out and you're gonna make this one out too and you're gonna see the light and sure I did I see the light right now <laughs> not so much light now <laughs> not rain. but I can tell you this is just the beginning <laughs> and every day I wake up in the morning and I'm motivated to keep on going to keep on doing to keep on push, pushing creating exploring experiencing enjoying suffering everything it's okay I don't care but I'm living <laughs> and I'm telling you no matter what happened no matter where you are and in what bad situation you are remember that after every rain the Sun comes out and it's shining and everything can be beautiful the simplest things in life are beautiful the trees that you see right now in front of you the flowers, the animals, the sky, the moon, the sun, the day and the night, the people you will meet, the experience you will have, the food you will eat, the clothes that you wear, the activity that you are doing, the beer on the beach, but whatever you do, life is full of things. From one side to the other, the rainbow is so enormous. And there's so many things you can do in this coming life and every day you have that chance 
to change, to create, to grow, to develop, to learn, to enjoy, to experience, to struggle, to fight, to get, to stand for what you deserve, to grow your kids, to build your legacy, to build your life, to enjoy it. And no one has the right to take it away from you. You have the right. Once you're born, you have the right to do all those things. And even if it's not so convenient right now, and even if it's not so easy right now, and even if it's really, really, really hard right now, you are so, so down. You feel like there is no way out. I'm telling you, there is a way out. There is always a way out. It's not a cliche. It's not only in the movies. It's in here, in this life, right now. And you have to look for the right way, the right path, and to have a plan how you get yourself out of this situation that you're in. And to all the people who are succeeding now, it's not for you. But one day, remember, you might go down. And if you go down, you listen to this clip, I mean to this tape, or whatever it is, <laughs> YouTube <laughs> video, and get the spirit and the motivation and know that you can do it and you have the right and the privilege as a human being to live free and happily ever after. <laughs> Anyway, let's cut the crap. Another 17 minutes of your life. I hope you're not angry at me. But if you're listening until now, that's not that bad, I guess. And I wish you all the best, guys. I know that not everything is easy. And I told you already, I've been in a situation like that. And I was hearing those motivational speaking. I remember Les Brown talking to me. I mean, he's talking to everybody. But I feel like he's talking to me. I'm a deep shit, man. <laughs> I don't have food to buy. I don't have money to buy food in the, in the market, in the supermarket. I don't have money to put gas in my car. <laughs> All kind of shit like that. I need to take the kids, and there's no money to give them anything. And I said to myself, oh my God, what am I going to do? And then I start to listen to Les Brown on the YouTube. And this guy, <laughs> cheer me up. <laughs> Yeah, Les, you're good. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything. I even met you in Singapore, as I said before. I know if I... Ah, yeah, I did, uh, I, I'm not sure I uploaded that video yet. Anyway, you hear, you listen, over and over again, until it gets into you. <laughs> until it turns something in you. Until it ignites that spirit you need to have. That energy you have and possess in your, in your mind and your heart. Because you are a warrior. You are a fighter. You are a warrior of life. And no one can take that away from you. No one will dictate you. No one will control you. And nobody will tell you how to live this life in this life. Because you are the only one who are the master of your own self. Don't let anybody abuse you. Don't let anybody control you. You choose. You choose the right path for you. You decide on which mountain you want to climb and on which path you're going to climb that mountain. So set your goal, find the right mountain for yourself and start climbing. And remember, every journey starts with the first step. So take that step and start your journey so guys thanks for listening thanks for tuning in again it's me Alofia here from Singapore broadcasting for my car <laughs> in the rain and I wish you all the best stay strong be safe and keep on keep up the spirit keep on rocking and know that life is good and after that rain the sun will come out and we can all continue to smile and live properly. So, 
Take care again. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon down the road on the next one. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. See you soon.